So what makes a great PTB, or plain-toed blucher? Uh, in today's episode, we're going to examine six different pairs of plain-toed bluchers, uh, really take a look at what, what I like, what I don't like. Um, I'm not going to really talk about price, but I wanted to include some info here so that you can see what they cost. They're all similar in pricing. Uh, some are less expensive than others, and some are uh, discontinued, and you can find them on sale. So this is Wisconsin Shoe Guy, and here we go with another episode of our shoe battle. Hey, I've organized all my playlists on this channel so that you're able to easily find different types of shoes, different brands of shoes, as well as uh, finding all my shoe battles, uh, worth the price shoe reviews, etc., all in one place. Enjoy. Welcome back. Whether you have five pairs of shoes or 50 pairs of shoes, odds are you're into men's dress shoes. A good part of your time is spent doing this. And this makes a huge difference in the quality, well, not the quality, but the care of your shoes. And uh, that can make a big difference. I uh, was looking at things today and I thought, you know, it'll be really interesting if we can take a look at one of my favorite uh, shoe styles and talk about what makes pairs different and what makes pairs great. So today we're gonna talk about this style. This is a hole cut blucher, okay? So it's one piece of leather all the way around and then the blucher is tied on here and it acts like a derby, okay? These can have rubber soles, they can have leather soles, uh, they can be made of uh, um, calf leather, they can be made of suede, they can be made of shell cordovan leather. Uh, there's a lot of variations. I even have one pair in museum calf. And um, this is just, it's a, it's a fantastic shoe, which allows you to um, wear it as a dress shoe. Um, it's plain, um, it's easy to do. Uh, generally, it's kind of clunky, kind of bulky, okay? So if you're really into the sleek dress shoe, this is probably not for you. But it is a um, it is a dressy shoe, and you can wear it with suits. Uh, but uh, you can also dress it down very easily. Uh, it's a jeans, sweatshirt, kind of like I am now. Uh, it is it is a perfect shoe to cross over for the COVID times back to the in-person work times uh, because it uh, it's comfortable. Uh, it's solid. You get a pair with rubber soles. It's fairly indestructible. Um, or you can get a pair with uh, JR soles um, or an Oak Park tan sole, and it's uh, pretty darn indestructible then too. So, so let's take a look at the six shoes that we're going to be comparing today and, and look at what is uh, really interesting about them. Now, I have shoes that are made in the United States. I have shoes that are made in England. I have shoes that are made in Spain. So Hopefully that gives you a little bit of a, 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 a look at a bunch of different things. Uh, I have three different brands uh, from the United Kingdom. Uh, I have a pair of Churches, I have a pair of Trickers, and I have a pair of Crockett and Jones. Uh, from the United States, I have a pair of Allen Edmonds, I have a pair of uh, Aldens, and then from Spain, I have a pair of Carminas. So this shoe is called the plain toe blucher, okay? Also a whole cut blucher. Uh, a plain toe blucher can also be like a regular derby, uh, but uh, generally speaking, this is the style that I prefer. And uh, it is also affectionately known, especially among shoe connoisseurs as a PTB, right? So if you wanna take a look at some of these, do a hashtag PTB on Instagram, and there are over 85,000 uh, posts about this shoe. Pretty cool, huh? So let's take a look. So first of all, this uh, is your basic brown, okay? Uh, brown calf shoe, okay? Uh, you can see based on the, the way the light reflects on this, this is a very nice full grain calf, okay? Uh, this is made by Crockett and Jones. So Crockett and Jones on the shoe tree, Crockett and Jones on the sole, all right? Now, Crockett & Jones is a, a great maker in the UK. Uh, they've been around for a long, long time. Uh, they, um, 
I'll, I'll include um, posts with the pricing and, and so forth of the shoe. This particular shoe is called the Lenark 3. Uh, this is on the 325 last, uh, which is also the last for the Pembroke. So if you're really into Shell Cordovan, they do not make this in Shell Cordovan unless you special order it, and I've never done that. Uh, but they do make the Pembrokes in Shell Cordovan, and it's on the same last. Now, the, the Pembroke is a uh, short wing derby, uh, also known as a Budapest, and uh, is a, uh, a very, very popular shoe. Um, many, many people tell me that, that that is the epitome of Crockett and Jones. Uh, and although I tend to like the sleeker Crockett and Jones more, and so I've got my Westbourne, um, looking at uh, an Alex hole cut, um, things like that. Um, this is an absolute staple in my wardrobe. If, if I think about when I started collecting shoes, I really wanted to focus on two models, okay? It was the plain toe blucher and it was the long wing blucher. I thought that that would cover everything that I ever wanted to do ever. And then I saw an Adelaide and I went crazy. So now I have a lot of Adelaides. Um, I have plain toe bluchers. Um, I have the uh, long wings. Um, and uh, occasionally I get into a split toes, which is, as you know, also a huge part of my collection now as well. So um, the collection grows, but the concept and my origins is really in this shoe. My very first pair of Shell Cordovan shoes was a burgundy pair of leads. And I have videos on it on my channel. You're welcome to go through. If you look at my Shell Cordovan playlist, you'll be able to see a lot of the um, different uh, pairs that I've had. Uh, but that pair needed to be resold and I decided I was gonna part with it. And when I say resold, I had it for 15, 16 years before I felt like it needed to be resold. Uh, so the shoe was a monster. It was really, really good. Now I decided to replace it with a shoe um, that is also an Allen Edmonds lead. And those are here. And that is, um, yeah, yes, they are green, okay? Uh, so I decided to go away from uh, the burgundy and, and stick with this. Now they're, they're new, you can see that. Um, these have JR soles, that's the same kind of sole that lasted so long. And um, you know, just an absolutely tremendous, beautiful shoe, okay? Shell Cordovan also. Um, Shell Cordovan is um, a very special type of leather. If you're not familiar with it, I strongly encourage you to take a look. Uh, it's not inexpensive because one uh, shell okay, is a, a piece of leather from the rump of a horse um, is used for every pair of shoes uh, if you're, you're above a size nine, I think, right? So, um, and especially shoes like this that use a single piece, you can't really shortcut that, right? So um, it's just, it's, it's expensive to put a pair together because there's not that many horses. It's not like cows where, you know, we eat a lot of beef uh, around the world. Um, so while there are tanneries that specialize in this, um, there are, there are few, few and far between. Uh, the best um, shell cord of tannery that I know of is Horween out of Chicago, yay. Uh, but there's also Agawa in Japan, Shinki in Japan, there's Toscana in Italy, uh, which is also called the Shell Cordovan, okay? Uh, and um, I, I, um, there's, uh, I have one pair of Shell Cordovan shoes that was from a tannery in, in the UK. Unfortunately, that tannery is no longer in business. So, um, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a tough thing to do. Now, if you look at Crockett and Jones, you look at Carmina, you look at Alden, you look at Alan Edmonds, they all use Shell Cordovan from Horween, okay? So it's, uh, um, it's really good, but you should be prepared. Right? There's normally uh, between $450 and $800 upcharge on the shoe if you wanna change the leather to Shell Cordovan. So it is not inexpensive. Um, now um, I have another pair that I have here, which is also a burgundy pair. Uh, this pair is also new and this is from Alden. This is the 990. And uh, you can see um, I, I got these as a special uh, uh, deal from, from somebody that I met online. Um, they have a little bit of wear here for, for being so new, uh, but it is, and it has some sun. Uh, so it lightened considerably. The shell cord have been from Alden is normally quite, quite dark. Um, and, uh, but uh, I got a heck of a deal on them. I'm super thrilled to have them. And um, this is a, another one that we're gonna be looking at. Now, so you can see I have dark brown, I have green, I have burgundy, so I should have something lighter. Now this is from Carmina, okay? and also with rubber soles, it says Carmina on them. And this 
uh, is what they call natural shell cordovan. They also have a bourbon shell cordovan and a cognac shell cordovan, uh, which are different colors, slightly darker than this. Um, uh, there's whiskey shell cordovan, which is a lot darker. Um, it's actually closer to this color, just a little bit lighter than this. Um, and uh, so um, and there's Armagnac, which is uh, very similar to whiskey, um, which is the Carmina name for the color. Um, and they also make navy shell cordovan, which is also um, out there and very, very nice. Now, um, I chose um, this particular shoe um, in this because I felt like this really epitomized everything that's great about Carmina. This is on the Oscar last. It has um, just beautiful lines. And if you look at the lines of this and you compare it to this, right? It's very, very similar. And, that, and that's what I like about it. Now, it also has some, some really unique things which we'll talk about as we really get into it. Now, um, so I have burgundy, I have green, I have natural, okay, which we'll just call light brown or tan, right? I have brown. I, sh I wanted to have something in the collection that really represented um, some of the uniqueness of the coloring that I like. And so I decided that I was going to try a pair in a museum cap, okay? Now this museum cap, I have a pair of shell cordovan in, in, in a museum kind of color, they call it marbled. Uh, it's actually called shaved and they changed the name as they were looking at it. It's very similar to this and they started calling it cognac. But this museum cap is absolutely beautiful. And this is a pair that's put together by Trickers. This is the Trickers Robert, okay? Now you'll notice the one big difference here is that it has what looks like a heel cap on it. But this is a faux heel cap. Now we all know what faux leather is. What the heck is a faux heel cap, right? A faux heel cap means they just sew it in, okay? Now you'll see this a lot in the shoe world. You'll see uh, faux cap toes, you'll see um, this, you'll see a, a whole cut shoe that is perforated or brogued um, it, to look like a wingtip and they'll call it a faux wingtip. Um, so there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of this going on, but this is a very, very subtle, small style choice that they have in order to uh, make it different. Now this is Leather Soles. Tricker doesn't put their name on the outside of the shoe, uh, like some brands do, it just says made in England. Uh, but it is a, a really good classic shoe and um, it's, it's an absolute joy to wear. So I'm gonna talk a lot more about this when we start getting into the details of the shoes, but I, I really, um, I cannot um, emphasize enough how cool uh, Trickers is as a brand, and this is as a shoe. This is my first pair of Trickers. Trickers is um, the second oldest uh, shoe brand that I own. Um, I own a pair of Henry Maxwell's, which is circa 1750. Uh, that, not the pair, but the brand, right? And, and Trickers is um, 1829, okay? So really old, you know, so um, kind, of a, kind of a cool deal. Now, um, this is another pair. Uh, which is very different. This is um, suede, okay? Um, also the same general style. Uh, this is eyelets. But if you look at the brand, that is pretty darn cool. This is churches. Now, when you look at the sole, <laughs> yeah, it's churches. Wow, you yeah, know, ever since uh, the uh, Prada, I think the Prada group um, bought churches, um, they've done a lot of really cool branding things and a lot of different things. A lot of people have complained about this and that and everything else on it um, since then. But I got to be honest, um, the quality of these shoes is just fantastic. Uh, like the Trickers, these are unlined. And um, so you can actually feel the, uh, you can actually see that the, um, the, the, the smooth leather part. Um, also very much a full grain, uh, beautiful leather. Um, and, uh, you know, they're, they're, these are basically, um, uh, indestructible. I mean, they're, they're very, very nice shoes. Um, and this color of navy, um, I really like as well. Now, I've been really cautious with this because this navy is a little bit lighter in color uh, than my other navy suede shoes were. And when I used the Saphir navy spray on those, um, it darkened them a lot. And so I'm afraid that if I, if I use it on this, I will darken it. So I've just been uh, uh, not doing that very much. But you can see just if I um, if I brush it with my hand, how, how nice and long the, the nap is on these shoes. It is really quite, quite lovely. So we'll talk a, a little bit about that. We'll also talk about why I get lined or unlined and, and what difference does that make? Because I think that that can be interesting as well. So um, those are the six shoes we're going to talk about today. 
I've talked to you a little bit about my history with um, the plain toe blucher. Um, I've had some others over the years. Um, I've also tried plain toe derbies. Um, and what I've been doing is I've been really trying to shed parts of my collection that don't fit very well. And so um, I'm really also trying to focus in on the best one per brand, um, which is hard. Now, you know, when I started collecting and I started focusing in on this style of shoe, something um, came to my mind that, that was a very big surprise for me. There are brands that don't have this style of shoe. And coming from America and looking at Alden and Allen Edmonds, this was like the main basic shoe, right? And, and um, it's gone up and down in popularity over the years, but it's always been there. And uh, now that's no longer the case. There's a lot of brands that are out there that simply don't put out this kind of shoe. Um, so it's, um, it, it's a little bit more unique uh, now, now that I'm out there. So uh, like for instance, St. Crispin's, this is not one of the styles that they do. Um, you know, uh, Berluti, Bontoni, um, all, all of those, this is just not in their arsenal. So um, Loke, I have not seen this in Loke. Now, oh, wait a second, I take that back. Um, I have, um, but they have it with uh, only with corrected grade leather. You can't get it with um, like, a, like a high grade leather. So um, that's, that's been a challenge. Doc Martens has a pair of this also in corrected grain leather. So, you know, and Doc Martens gets a bad rap, right? They, they're, they have Norwegian welted made in England shoes. So they have some really high end stuff, which is actually quite nice. Um, so, you know, it's, it's not all, you know, uh, for lack of a better word, uh, low quality, high price fashion stuff that, that I know a lot of shoe aficionados kind of sneer at. So, um, so, you know, this is something that, you know, you, you, you take a look at, you've got to decide whether or not you want something in your collection that's unique. Um, something that is, um, you know, do you want to be the, the fashion side of shoes? Do you want to be on the, um, uh, you know, do you want to be on the, uh, on the conservative side of shoes? Or do you just want to have shoes because that's what you want to wear and you don't really care about collecting strategy? That's totally fine too, right? I, I, I never really cared about collecting strategy. I just wore them. Uh, so, but now, um, as you can tell, I, I try to make it so that I have shoes that I'll wear and so I want them to be different and I want them to, to be unique. Uh, if I find a pair of these in Navy, I will probably risk having a second pair in the same brand to have Navy shell cordovan plain toe bluchers because I love them, I love the shoe. So let's, um, let's talk a little bit about each shoe now in, in a little bit more detail and, and what, uh, what, what, what we like about them and what we don't and um, things, things to think about when you're looking at them. Now, when you, when you start looking at, at shoes like this, and especially if you're a collector and, and, and you have a number of shoes, one of the things that you can often do is you can often uh, do a made to order shoe. And that gives you the, a lot of flexibility over what you decide to put on the shoe, right? You can say, you know what? I really like leather soles. So I'm just gonna buy shoes with leather soles. You can do the opposite and just get rubber soles, right? Um, but let's talk a little bit about the welt because I think the welt on the shoe can be an interesting um, way of looking at, at what it is. So, um, so this is the, uh, the Crockett and Jones, and you can see that this has what they commonly call a storm welt, okay? Now a storm welt means it has this little rise here, okay? And it goes up around the shoe to protect it in storms. Yeah, it's really that simple, but, um, it's supposed to make it more waterproof. It's questionable whether it really does because most Goodyear welted shoes are waterproof, but it, it, is a, um, uh, it is a really interesting design choice. And when you have a contrast storm welt like this one, it's really, really easy to see, okay? Now I, I wanna point something out here. You can see that there are stitches on this part of the welt connecting it to the sole, but not stitches into the shoe. Well, that's not always the case. If you look at this pair, okay, there are stitches into the sole and there are stitches into the shoe. Now this is not a Norwegian welt. This is a pre-stitched storm welt. Okay, I'm gonna put that up closer so you can see the two. That's not a mirror. There really are different stitches there. Now you'll also notice, I mean, this is trickers. One of the things that, uh, you know, is considered to be a, a part of the, the quality measurement is how much those stitches are similar on the bottom and on the top there, right? It's, it's kind of a cool thing, 
and um, you know, not to be not to be overlooked. Um, this is why Trickers has the reputation that it does. Uh, they're just fantastically made shoes. Um, we look at this pair, okay? And you don't see that um, the stitches on that side at all. Um, and here, the stitches in the welt are there, but, um, and these are a little dirty, but they're also, um, the stitches are, are made with a, a color thread that matches the welts. You can't really see them that easily, okay? That's because for, um, and they have the beautiful uh, contrast on the bottom stitch, uh, but they don't consider this part to be especially interesting. So they don't do that. Now, I know some guys, some patina artists who are great at either painting or cleaning those stitches to make them contrast stitch. And I, I know folks that have done that with some vintage floor shines. By the way, floor shine made this style of shoe as well. It was, it was also very popular and um, there are a load of them out on the market if you're, if you're looking for that. Um, and um, very, very well made. So, um, so, so, so some really interesting things. Now, uh, this is the all then, and look at what they have on that, on that top of the weld. That is fudging. Now, when I've showed fudging before on, on the channel, usually I show fudging as it relates to a Oxford and the fudging is really, really close together. It's really, really fine. If it's on a hand welted shoe, like an Enzo Bonafé, they, it, it's super, super fine. You know, it, it, sometimes it's not visible from the top. It's only visible when you like dig in. And it's, this is that wheel that they roll along the outside uh, for finishing. Okay. One of the things people love about Alden over all these other brands is that the finishing is better. Okay. So it's something that's out there and something that's, that's important to a lot of people. Now, when we look at Allen Edmonds, look at that, there's fudging. Now it's a little different. It's a little boxy. It has a little, little different area there. You can see their stitches are not quite as close together, but these are actually really close together for, for Allen Edmonds. Um, and you can look on the bottom, you know, they've got the groove and it's not super, super perfect, but it's not bad. Um, certainly not bad for, for other Allen Edmonds that I've seen. Um, and, uh, you know, certainly not anything to complain about, right? Um, and, and it's a, uh, you know, a, a pretty well done um, example. Look here, the contrast, very, very clean. And here on the underside, they don't consider this to be really important to pretty. So it's the same color as the sole, right? So some, some interesting things as you, as you look at it, right? Carmina, very, very focused on the top of the shoe. The sole better work, right? But they don't really spend a lot of time on it. I mean, they, it's a beautiful sole, don't get me wrong, but it's, it is what it is. Now you get Crockett and Jones and it's not really a contrast. It's not really matching in color, okay? You look at it over here, there is absolutely no fudging, but the stitches are pretty darn close together. Okay? Uh, now, uh, overall, again, uh, Crockett and Jones, just known for, hey, we, we just make great shoes. <laughs> That's it, right? It, it's, it's, a very, um, it's, it's a very different uh, um, outlook than, than some of the others. So. All right, so, so, so the outside, the stitching, that's one of the things you can look at. And, and a lot of people spend a lot of time arguing in, in, in forums about this um, and how important it is and whether it matters and relevance and all the jazz. But um, that's, that's one of the things people look at. So you've got the welt, you've got the, the stitching. Now, if you are MTOing the shoe, uh, made to order, right? You can choose, hey, I want a flat welt. Hey, I want a storm welt. Um, there's a brand out there, um, that does a triple welt, okay? And that's Grenson in the UK. Um, and I don't know if Grenson makes this particular style of shoe, but I think they do, as I recall. Um, so so that, that's, a, that's an area that you can, you can look at, you know, go big or go home kind of thing, right? Um, the sole, do you want a rubber sole? Now you'll notice that the two of the rubber soles that I have are basically the same, right? It's the stud sole. And then the other one is completely different. And um, this is a branded sole, right? And their, you know, the, their purpose here is, hey, you know what? You're going to know when you walk in the snow that you just 
you know, you're wearing churches, okay, which is great. Um, so let's talk about leather soles. So by the way, none of these are a closed um, or a blind stitch channel. Um, and I don't have any that are that are this style shoe. Um, and, and that's because um, uh, I don't have, um, uh, I don't have a pair of Meermans anymore. Meerman makes this shoe. Um, they make it with beautiful JR leather soles and they blind stitch the channel. Uh, you can do a custom order of Carmina's and they'll do the same thing. Um, so that, that is something that's out there, but all of mine are open channel. What does open channel mean? As you can see the stitching, uh, the stitching ditch, right? They, they create this little groove in here and they do the stitching in the groove and um, they, that, that is visible, right? So, um, these do not have narrow uh, waists. Um, they're they're all usually um, pretty pretty straight. And um, this is the trickers, right? And this is kind of what it looks like new and after it's worn, right? Um, the Alden, you can see now Alden has this little finishing wheel work that they do on the sole, which is very pretty. Uh, as I understand it, it's not very functional. It doesn't really do anything, uh, but it is um, it is nice looking. Um, this also has the little um, circular logo there to say that it's made with Horween um, shell cordovan. Uh, these are not shell cordovan, so they don't have that. And I don't think that uh, Trickers does that on their shell cordovan shoes. They do use, um, uh, they do make shoes with shell cordovan. I believe they use Horween, but I could be wrong. So if you know that, please leave a comment. I, I'd love to know. Uh, they actually make this shoe. Um, in a um, in shell cordovan, they have very different colors. They're kind of almost pastels, and um, but uh, they're called the Bobby, right? So the Trickers Bobby is with shell. The Trickers Robert is with uh, with different types of uh, calf leather. Okay, um, so so that is the um, that is the Alden, and you can see that finishing. And then this is the Allen Edmonds. Now Allen Edmonds. Uh, I, I talked before about a JR soul, JR soul. JR uh, is uh, uh, um, Johann Rendenbach, uh, which is a German company. They're very well known for making soles. Uh, generally considered to be some of the finest soles in the world. If, if not the finest, um, you know, this, this spoke houses and stuff like that use something different that's also a double oak bark tanned. And they're gonna say that that's better. I have a pair of, um, uh, Gaziano and Girlings, which uses the same sole material as a lot of the bespoke houses. And it feels softer to walk on, but it is just as hardy. Whether or not that, how the, I, I haven't had them very long, so I can't tell you if they're going to last as long. Um, you know, I've had six pairs of, uh, of these um, in Shell Cordovan over the years, and I've had three pairs uh, that have gone more than 10 years uh, without uh, needing a resole. Um, and the others that I sold uh, or that I still have don't need a resale, so I, I can't tell, but I mean, they're not close, right? So um, this is there. Now, um, Allen Edmonds also has the Horween, a little bit different. And of course they have their own uh, logo there as well. And this uh, little, uh, little, little shoe that's there just uh, represents that this is a factory second. And this is, I, I bought a factory second for these. Uh, because um, it was a smoking hot deal and uh, I had them inspect them and there was nothing wrong with them. So, um, so, so those, are, those are the differences. So, uh, but you'll notice that all of these, okay, except for these are a double sole, okay? So look at the thickness, all right? Now it's not very, very different. Um, when I order um, a high-end pair of shoes, um, I'm usually given the option between a six millimeter, an eight millimeter, or a 10 millimeter sole. So, and when I go and I look at the shoe really carefully, you can see that there is an outer sole here, and then there's another line there before the welt, okay? That line is what they call a midsole, and you'll notice that the outer sole here is much thicker than the other one. So I would assume, and I, I, I don't have my tape measure handy, but I would assume that that's about 10 millimeter, meaning double sole, okay? So don't think that, you know, double sole is twice as thick because it's very rarely twice as thick. Uh, the only brand that I know that does triple soles uh, is Heinrich Dinklocker. 
Um, and this is not a style that they, uh, that they produce. So, um, so, so the type of soul can be important. Um, uh, what you're looking for, you can choose to have a double soul. You can choose to have a single soul. Uh, that can be a, a, a nice style choice. Um, so let's talk about the lining. Um, the lining um, on, on, on most of these is, is very good veg tanned leather. Um, and, and that really has a big impact on the comfort. Um, lined shoes um, also don't stretch as much as unlined shoes, um, which is pretty straightforward and simple, but I'll explain it because um, if you have two pieces of leather that are sewn together and then they're um, stretched, you have two different pieces that are not going to, um, that are not gonna give as much give and, and much flex over time. Um, as if it's one piece and it's just being flexed over and over and over again. Um, so leather as a material stretches, higher quality leather, thicker leather stretches less than, than thin leather, but it all stretches. But if you've got two layers put together that are all both high quality thick leather, uh, it stretches less. So, so that's, that's an interesting thing. Now, um, when, you, when you choose a lining, there are options. Um, you can choose um, like a, a Carmina in their MTO program offers um, a, a bunch of different colors. Uh, they also uh, offer a choice between calf and kid leather. Kid is baby goat, calf is baby cow, okay? Kid is very, very thin, not as comfortable, okay? That's my experience. I have one pair of Adelaide's that has kid leather lining. I'm not gonna do that again, okay? I might try kid on the out on the on the upper, but but not uh, not that again. Um, the Aldens are are extremely thick. Uh, the and and uh, just feel like it's really really thick um, leather. Um, it's a really good contrast. Uh, the Allen Edmonds same thing. Very very thick lining, um, and it's such a huge contrast in feel with the shell cordovan, which is like a really really thick membrane to um, uh, a really thin membrane. Excuse me to a really thick um, lining. Um, it, feels, it feels really, really soft when you're wearing them. Um, Allen Edmonds is the only brand of shoe I've ever had where I can take a, a brand new pair and I can go walk for five, six miles and I do not blister. I do not have rubbing on my feet at all. And I don't feel like I need to break them in. Um, Gaziano and Girling close second, uh, but all of these others um, I've had to break in to, to a greater or lesser degree. So um, something to keep in mind there as, as you're buying shoes, um, is figuring out which shoes fit your feet the best. Um, and that can be a, an enormous factor for folks, especially if you don't wear shoes a lot, um, they don't really have the opportunity to break in. Uh, I've been fortunate in that I've had the opportunity on these to, to wear them a lot, except for the Aldens, which are brand new. And the Allen Edmonds are new, but they just, they fit, fit like a glove. So, so no issue there. Now, the best lining of any of these is actually one of the thinnest, which I think is funny but um, it's on the Crockett and Jones. I have no idea what Crockett and Jones does, but they use this really, really light colored lining, right? So you look at that compared to the color of the Alden and the, uh, the Allen Edmonds, both have this natural color, right? Uh, but that, um, the, uh, the, the Crockett and Jones, by the way, Crockett and Jones inside lettering is, is, is stamped, right? I mean, it's, it's really, distinctive. You can always tell a brand that's using Crockett and Jones to make their, their shoes because it has that stamp on the inside. Um, but this is super, super thin and super, super soft uh, veg tanned leather. Um, probably the softest of any that I've ever had. Um, and I own, you know, 50 brands of shoes. Um, Crockett and Jones is consistently the softest on the lining. No idea why, um, but it is a, a, a really cool um, piece. Now, um, the, uh, the Carminas have a black lining, okay, which is a little different, um, but is, uh, it actually feels a lot like the outer. So this could be, um, I've seen this before, this could be box cap. Um, and they, they, um, they just use this uh, a, a thinner version of what they use for an upper, and uh, they'll use that. Um, again, Carminas are incredibly high quality shoes, um, as are all of these, right? I mean, so, so they're fine. But, but now the, the others are unlined. So what does unlined mean? Okay. 
Well, take a look here. This, you can see that they, we do, they do lining along the heel and they do lining along the edges. But then there, the lining stops. And what do you have? You have kind of like a suede. Well, that suede is just the museum calf on the inside. Right? Um, so you get this uh, really cool feel. Now, these are great shoes for summer. Um, and um, because they're single sole, compared to all of these others, they're super light, which is great, okay? And so I can, I can wear these with, um, you know, a, a hop sack suit and um, really, really lightweight linen suits. And um, I just, it, it feels like you're walking on air and um, they're, they're just a, a very, very high quality um, and, and a very comfortable shoe. This is also the only um, museum cap that I've had that does not crease at all. Um, it, it, this, um, you know, there's, there's no, I mean, there's no looseness in the pores or any of that junk. I mean, this is just really very, very high quality all the way around, okay? Um, now, the, uh, and, and they come with, if you buy them from the right dealer, uh, you can buy these with trees. Um, and uh, like there's a, I, I, I buy my trickers from a company called Petaware and Petaware has a trickers club so uh, once you buy the first one, you get 10% off of all future ones and um, all your trickers come with trickers treats. It's a great deal. Trickers treats are like 80, 90 bucks. So, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a fantastic deal. Now the, uh, the churches, okay. Now remember these have rubber soles, uh, but they still have the storm wells. And if you look on the inside, this is actually the smooth part of the leather. So I'm gonna actually try to get in there close. And you can see this is just navy calf. Right? And uh, just an absolutely beautiful navy calf. Um, would uh, would if if you could reverse a shoe, um, it would be it would be great calf to do that with. You can kind of see here. Okay. Um, it's just it's it's a really nice um, uh, very um, thin, uh, but very, um, very comfortable and super, super luxurious and soft shoe. Now, um, again, very, very light. Um, these, uh, because they're, you use less leather, it, it really makes them a little bit less structured, um, but it's important and, and both of these shoes do a really good job. The heel is still structured, right? So you can, um, you know, you, you feel supported and the toe, is structured, um, so you know if something falls on your foot, you, you're not likely to you know be hurt by it. So that's also part of the plain toe blue shoe. So, so that is um, the linings. Now, if we move on from there, um, there are a couple really subtle differences. And when you're doing a made-to-order shoe, um, they can be things that you can uh, you can choose, which I'll point out here. So the first are these eyelets. Okay. You can do a lot of different uh, things with eyelets. Um, they have antique brass, they have nickel. Uh, you can do a match color like these are. Um, sometimes you can see them in black um, for contrast. Um, a lot of different, uh, a lot of different options that are out there. And um, every everybody has the you know the ability to choose what they like on it. Um, most eyelets are what they call blind eyelets. So you see, you have these. Um, uh, where there is a grommet, but it's only on the inside of the shoe, not on the outside. Okay, so that 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 is another option that that a lot of people will choose. And if you think of most of these shoes, um, these have blind eyelets, these have blind eyelets, and these have blind eyelets. Right? Now, what's interesting is Alden, and I've noticed this on all the Alden Shell Cordovan that I own. Um, does not have any eyelet, does it, or I mean, it has an eyelet, it has the hole, but it doesn't have any grommet at all, okay? And um, I used to think that that was um, a little bit of a weakness, but then when I started getting some higher end shoes, none of them <laughs> have eyelets. So it is, um, it is a mark of a much higher quality hand grade shoe. Um, and, um, you know, they, they do it well. Now, there must be something that they do to reinforce it because I've never had a problem with it. Okay, I just wanna be clear about that. Um, and, um, you know, so it certainly works just fine, but um, it, is, it is a subtle difference. 
Um, and you can choose like when you're doing an MTO for all then, which a lot of the dealers will have these group made to order stuff. Um, they will often include eyelets or, or not include eyelets, however you want to do it. The one thing I will say about eyelets, um, and, and this is important as you're looking at any of the shoes, um, is that the, um, the holes have to be large enough for laces that you want. Um, I like colored laces. Sometimes I go through phases. And when I'm wearing colored laces, um, sometimes I run into issues where I can't get them into my higher end shoes because they, they just don't fit. So that can be a uh, challenge. So um, something to think about if you're, if you're out looking for, uh, for laces. So um, that is the, uh, the, the shoe battle side of this, kind of um, some, some things to think about if you're MTOing the shoe. Uh, I'm gonna leave you on one final note on something to think about when you're looking at this style of shoe. And that is the the back or the hindquarters or the uh, what they what they like think of as 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 a seam. Now, um, normally a hole cut, okay, will just be a single seam sewn together. Uh, but a lot of brands will use a patch, okay, and that means two things during construction. They don't have to make it beautiful when they when they sew the pieces together. Um, the other thing is is that it uh, adds a little bit of uh, informality um, to the shoes. So you'll see a patch on the Trickers. You'll see a patch on the uh, Crockett and Jones. And on the, um, on the churches, you do not. It is just a plain seam, okay? On the Carmina, you have a patch, right? On the Alden, you have a, um, a seam and then you have the little lip here at the top, okay, which is common um, on Oxford's, okay. Allen Edmonds, you have the seam and you have the little lip there as well, okay. So um, is not a huge deal. It's just something to think about, but um, that can be a, um, a, a match of quality, okay. Doing the seam and having the seam show uh, is tougher to do for the shoemaker. Um, and so if I were representing the shoe cobblers that, that are making their cord vendors that are making the shoes, um, I would say that that was really important. Um, I'm not, I'm, I'm an enthusiast and, and I don't really know very much about that. Uh, but for me, um, I think that it's just a difference in, in, uh, in the way the shoes look. Um, and to me, I just like the variation. So anyway, this is Wisconsin Shoe Guy. Thank you for watching. I'm anxious to hear what you guys think. Uh, I know that this was a lot of talk, talk, talk kind of stuff and uh, not sure if this is what you particularly like. So please let me know. I appreciate your comments. I do try to read every one and I either, uh, you know, give it a heart or I will respond. If you ask me a serious question, I will do my best to give you a serious answer. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.